Welcome back to The Band Guide. I'm your band guy, Colin, and today we are looking at how to edit drums in Logic. If you want your drums to sound professional, you likely need to do at least some editing. In this video, I'm gonna show you two ways that you can go about editing your drums to sound professional in a way that suits your song and the type of music that you're making. But before we get into today's video, I wanna give you something. If you're serious about making your music sound great, editing is a huge part of that process, but you also have to mix it. And mixing can be really complicated and overwhelming. So I'm going to give you something that's going to simplify it and make it much, much easier for you. It's my six step checklist to a pro mix, and it just walks through the six steps that all professional mixes have and how you can do them inside Logic or GarageBand or wherever it is that you're making music. It's completely free from link in the description below, so be sure to pick it up. But let's go and get into editing drums in Logic. Now, when it comes to editing drums, First and foremost, most likely you've recorded this with multiple microphones on the drum kit, multiple different inputs for the drum recording. And anytime we've done that, it's really important that we group our tracks together. That way, any editing we do moves all of the microphones at one time, as opposed to one track over here and another track over here. So grouping is really key. So the way to do this, you're gonna select your top track, hold shift on the keyboard to select your bottom track, and then you're gonna hit X on the keyboard to bring up this little window. And then under group here, you're just gonna create a new group. In this case, I'm using group one. And over here on the left, we're going to just title this drums. And then really important, I actually missed this when I first switched over to Logic from Pro Tools. You need to turn on editing and quantize locked. This is really key. I don't know why it doesn't default to it, but now that we've done that, if I hit X here to get back out of that, any time I just grab one track, it's gonna move all of them at the same time, which is really important for what we're gonna do here today. Okay, now before we get into the bulk of this video, which is gonna be very, very precise editing, I just wanna talk philosophically about editing drums because when I started, I was only taught one way to approach editing drums and that's for every single drum hit to be perfectly on the beat. And that's actually what we're gonna focus on in today's video because for nine songs out of 10, that's the way you should approach drum editing. But occasionally you don't have to get that specific. If you're working on a song that doesn't need every hit to be perfectly in time, then you don't need to put every hit perfectly in time. I focus on this for any song that's really, really, really rhythmic and precise, like this song we're working on today, or if I'm gonna be layering other elements that are gonna be quantized perfectly to the grid, that's when I really focus on making sure that every single drum hit is perfectly on the grid. If you're not doing those two things, if you're just working on like a singer-songwriter, kind of like light rock song or something, as long as the hits are generally happening really, really close to end time, it's okay if they're not perfectly to the grid. As long as it feels right and sounds right, that's all you need to do. And an approach that I've used that I think is much better for that than lining up every single hit is letting the drummer feel come through, but making sure that the general performance is locked into the grid. And the way that I approach that is I'll listen with the metronome on, and when it starts to sound or feel a little bit off, I'll just shift a section to be a little bit more on, and then I won't touch anything else. So I'll just be moving sections as opposed to every individual drum hit. This can give you a little bit more natural of a feel. So for example here, at the start of this, I'm fairly on beat, right? This is fairly on beat. If you're looking at my snare hit, we're just following this cursor being perfectly on beat. But right here, I start to get really off. And if we listen to this, you'll hear that snare feels early. So I kind of just start to rush a little bit. I, I feel like I'm, I guess, racing the click a little bit. So what I need to do is just zoom in here, find the start of that snare hit, the first hit that feels off, and just slice right at that hit. And then I'll zoom back out and I'll find listening and looking, I'll find when it looks like I get back on beat. So right around here, I'm a little head here, but right around here, that's pretty on beat, not perfectly, but pretty on beat. So I'll go to the start of that hit, hit Command T. And then what I can do is just shift this entire little section here to make this whole section be a little bit more on beat. So I'll look at it with the marker there so I can see. And then yeah, that puts me just a little bit closer to being on beat. And now, just feels a little bit more on beat. So that's the way I'd approach it if you don't need it to be particularly accurate 100% of the time. This song needs to be accurate 100% of the time. Even just listening to that little snippet, I'm like, wow, that one snare is just a little bit early and then the next kick is a little bit late. And it just bothers me because it's so rhythmic, it almost feels like it should be a drum machine. So the goal of what we're gonna do in today's video is perfectly line up these drums 
perfectly on the beat. And we're gonna take every single kick and snare hit and make sure that they're hitting on the beat. Now, a broad overview, there's a lot of little steps that we're gonna do in this video, but a broad overview is that we're going to find all the transients for the kick drum and the snare drum, since they're what drives most drum beats. And we're going to split our audio regions at those kick and snare hits. And then we're gonna quantize those audio regions to be perfectly on the grid. And then we're going to fill it in and make it sound like I just played it that way. It's pretty amazing and it's better than using flex time because it's not using any sort of algorithmic shifting of the audio. That can start to warp sound and it can sound pretty unnatural pretty quickly. Doing it this way, there's no actual messing with the audio. You're just shifting it around, putting it perfectly on grid. So. First and foremost with this, I like to work in sections. I like to just take one section at a time. In this case, because I think it's a good example for this song, we're just gonna start with this first verse. A lot of times I'll obviously start with the intro. And we're just gonna find, in this case, it starts on bar 11. So I'm going to the first hit before bar 11 and using this kick drum as my guide, I'm just gonna find the very start of this kick hit and hit Command T to split that off. And I'm gonna zoom back out and look for the next section. I move to this floor tom here so I can see when those hits come in. And I'm gonna go to the start of this and find this kick drum and just go to the start of that kick drum hit and hit Command T to split that off. And then now we're just gonna focus on just this section and getting this section super locked in. Now, there's a lot of little steps here, as I said. So once we've identified our workspace, the next thing we're gonna do is turn our groups off. And then I'm gonna select just the region of the kick drum that we're working on, hit E on my keyboard to bring up the editor window, and then switch over to file. I didn't even know this existed when I first got Logic, but it's really handy. This is where, if we turn on this tool here, we will see all of our transients for this kick drum track, which are indicated by these orange lines. So each of these orange lines, Logic is detecting as a transient hit but initially it's gonna be the most sensitive it can be. So right now it's detecting the kick drum hit and I see it's detecting some of these quieter things that are actually the snare drum hit. If I turn this off, you'll see they're a lot quieter. Yes, it's technically a transient, it's a distinct hit, but it's not the kick drum. And I only wanna have transient markers for the kick drum. It's gonna be really important as we get into splitting up the audio. So we wanna get rid of those markers on the kick hit. And the first way to do this is to reduce the sensitivity with this little minus button here. So I'm just gonna hit the minus until I start to see them disappear. Now I'd rather be a little overzealous and mark things that aren't exact transients on the kick drum and then manually delete them because that's easier than manually adding them. But I'm gonna try to get it as accurate as I can. This looks pretty good here. I don't see it hitting on any of those smaller snare hits. So let's listen through and see if there's any we need to delete. Okay, so right here, it added one. To delete this, just change your tool up here to be an eraser tool. And then you can hold command on the keyboard and delete any that aren't actual kick drum hits. So right there. Takes a second, you gotta go through it. It's a little bit time consuming, but it's gonna save us a lot of time here in just a minute. And it's gonna make the drum editing much more accurate. Okay, so that's the whole region that we're working on, our whole workspace. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing for the snare drum here. And the snare drum is looking very accurate already. A lot of times it's gonna catch all those little hits, but this time I think it's pretty accurate. Let's listen to the snare drum. Let's take it out of solo. Yeah, that's great. Great, okay, so that's accurate, that looks good to me. Before we move on, I do wanna show you, if you have to draw in one, let's say you accidentally delete one that you want, just change your tool here to be a pencil tool zoom way in to make sure you can see the start of the actual transient and then just click and it's gonna add it. That's a little bit late, so I wanna be right there. Is that right? Yeah, perfect, okay. So that's how you can add them if you accidentally delete any or if it just didn't pick one up to begin with that you do want. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm gonna hit E to make that editor window go away. Now we're gonna turn on flex time, which if you haven't done yet, it's gonna take a second to process all the audio. I'm gonna hit Shift G to turn 
our group back on and we're gonna switch from monophonic to slicing. And then we're gonna also turn off the Q, which is the grid guidelines. It's telling Logic, hey, listen to or pay attention to the transients from this track. We wanna turn that off for anything that's not our kick drum and snare drum. And if you have multiple mics on your kick drum and snare drum, you wanna be sure to pick the ones that are gonna be more transient heavy. So for example, I have a kick in mic here, so just one kick mic, so I'm gonna go with that one. And I have a snare top and a snare bottom mic. Uh, I'm gonna use the snare top mic because that's closer to where the actual stick is hitting. It's gonna be a little bit more transient heavy. If you had two kick drum mics, a kick in and a kick out mic, I would probably use the kick in mic, not the kick out mic. But yeah, okay, the next thing we wanna do is zoom out to make sure we've only selected the region that we're working on here, our little workspace, if you will. We're gonna click this, and then we're going to right click or hold control and click on the top here where it says kick in. We're gonna right click up there and say slice at transient markers. And because we've only selected the cue for the kick and snare top, it's only gonna pay attention to the transient markers on flex time for kick and snare on those two tracks, but then it's gonna split the audio for all the tracks where those kick and snare hits are. So now we have a bunch of different regions and we're done with flex time. We're not gonna use flex time to edit these drums. Now what we're gonna do is select all of these little regions Make sure you get them all. Make sure you go to the beginning. Got that. Go to the end. Make sure you get them all at the end. If you miss any, like I did here, I can hold shift and click to add them. Now I'm going to zoom back out. And I'm going to go up to this list up here. So this button up here brings up our list and we can see the regions we've selected. And you can actually quantize from this. This is really cool. I didn't realize this for a long time. So here I can just hit quantize depending on what makes sense for your song. This song in eighth note makes a lot of sense. So we'll just hit Q to quantize. I'll make that list go away. And then if we zoom in, you'll see it moved all those audio regions to be perfectly on beat. The next thing I wanna do is just slightly drag the start of these audio regions to make sure that I'm not cutting off any of the transients. That's really important. Just make sure you get the entire drum hit. And then I'm gonna go up here to edit, go down to trim and then region start to previous region. And that's gonna fill in any of those gaps to make sure we don't have any sort of weird sound. If I play this without that done, anytime there's a gap, it's just weird. So again, go up to edit, trim, region start to previous region, and that fills in all those gaps. And then the last thing that we need to do before we check and make sure that it all worked right is go up to region, go here to fade out, under type, we're gonna change it to equal power crossfade. This might take a second. And then we're gonna type in here, I like to do four milliseconds. And that's just the length of the crossfade. And this is just gonna make sure that all of the audio regions are faded together so that there's no hard cuts that could create any sort of clicking or popping. Again, this might take a second. And now if we zoom in, we'll see it's added all those little fades just to make sure everything sounds nice and good. Okay, so the last step is to go through, listen, and fix anything that might be a little bit off. Sometimes the editing can just get a little bit weird. So we're just gonna listen through and fix anything. It's right there before that snare. Just a little bit of a pop right here. Likely just means I need to drag this back just a little bit. See, that fixed it. Again on this snare. And all that is, is like if I were to drag this this way a little bit, you see that old snare hit peeking through. So that just means I just need to drag this a little bit this way. That gets rid of that pop. There we go. Another one here. Let's drag this back a little bit. I think there's one here too. Yeah, let me find that. It's on this snare. Drag that back. And then I think on all three or at least two of these, there's a little one. So we're just gonna drag this back a little bit on all these. And let's listen to that. Perfect. Man, a lot of these snares, just getting that little bit of a pop. Trying it back. 
Same thing over here. A little bit there. A little bit there. So it's not uncommon to have to do a little bit of fixing. So be sure to listen through and make sure that it's working, right? Okay, and then that initial kick on this next section got cut off. We'll have to fix that in a minute. But now, the last thing we should do is just listen to this with the metronome on and notice just how much more in time it is. Before, I was rushing some beats, I was behind on some beats, but now everything is perfectly in time. And now it's as if I recorded it perfectly. I recorded as close as I could in the recording process, but this helped just fill in those little areas to make it as close as it needed to be. So that's editing in Logic. It is a little bit time consuming, I'm not gonna lie to you, but doing this will help your projects to sound more professional. All professional mixes have some amount of editing on them to just tighten them up and make sure that everything is hitting when it should be. Okay, that's it for this video. Before you go, be sure to grab the six step checklist to a pro mix that I mentioned at the beginning. It's really gonna help you out. It will give you that little edge to make it not just be in time, but actually sound really great too. It's completely free from link in the description below. And it just goes through the six steps that all professional mixes have and how you can do them as well. And I'd also love to hear from you. Have you been recording live drums? And if so, have you been editing? If not, are you gonna try this approach in the future? Let me know in the comments below. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video. One thing at a time.